When Call Me Carson fell into the grips of controversy, as a former fan of his content, I made sure I did the proper research. Although, this was different. After all the time it's been, more information continues to come out. And one man stood out acting as the main person behind not only this drama, but upon further analysis, reveals information that is bad on Dream, Misfits, and himself due to his own sexual misconduct allegations. That one man is Ryan P. Ryan is a managing director responsible behind group Groups such as Lunch Club, Misfits, and Dream Team. Ryan has a large amount of controversy which has not seen the attention it deserves. What you are watching is the first part of a three part video series where I take you through this journey of discovery I went on when learning about Ryan. And this video today begins with Call Me Carson. In this series I will tell you the stories and explain the drama of three individuals, all with a link that ties them together. Each individual will have their drama analyzed as this is necessary to help understand the story fully. So in this video I will We'll go over the entirety of Call Me Carson's drama, two years of controversy packed into a single video. Then at the end I'll reveal how the manager is the true antagonist of the drama so you should absolutely stick around for that. Call Me Carson is a large YouTuber who was credited with Minecraft's resurgence in popularity, sparked a career of several creators and in 2021 found himself in some controversy which would hugely impact his platform. So what happened? If I asked you that question based on you having some knowledge about Carson I would hazard a guess that you would say the infamous 16 fans drama. This is probably because unless you're in a coma during 2021, the internet was on fire. But that's not where the drama began. It all started around March 2020. Unknown to the public audience, members of Carson's now former content creator group Lunch Club received calls and was approached by Carson. Carson would open up to them admitting to some recent actions that he had made, how he had messaged underage fans and received explicit images from them. At the time he made the information sparse. Carson did not disclose the number of girls or the age of the girls. During this time, Carson had been reportedly going through mental health struggles, mainly to do with a separate drama revolving around Caterino and relationship problems. As a result of this, some friends began distancing themselves from Carson, but most stayed to comfort Carson to see him through his mental struggles that he was going through. This is backed up by Schlatt a year later, but I'm getting ahead of myself. It turned out that many of the Lunch Club members and Call Me Carson's associates were fed differing stories about what had occurred. After a period of time, these friends would mull over the situation and began putting the pieces together on the correct way to go about the situation, often communicating with each other and collectively learning the events of what really was occurring. Originally this was going to be revealed to the public via ideas such as a commentary video proposed by the manager Ryan, or a lunch club video where every member went over their side of the story. Although inevitably what really happened was Keemstar from Drama Alert received an anonymous tip giving him insight that something was happening behind the scenes, leading to him poking at members of lunch club to come forward. I am mentioning all of this because there is a lot of people upset that the public source for information came in the form of the controversial drama alert show. Hilariously in the comment section of this specific episode, many Carson fans were more upset that they had to watch Keemstar for this information. Now to preface, I don't like Keemstar or his show. I have made my views on Keem very open and I do not like this disgusting man. But I believe getting upset over the whistleblowers going on Keemstar's show to reveal the information is wrong. It's not that big of a deal and whilst I do not like Keem, he still runs a news show and this was news. It wasn't the first choice and Keem had already received a tip off about the situation. Say what you will, but it's not even a big problem to begin with so I don't think it's worth the time. Lunch Club members Travis and Noah Hugbox would appear on the show to broadcast some of the drama that had gone down. This was published on the 5th of January 2021. Even after all the time they had from March 2020 to January 2021, Noah and Travis still withheld a lot of information. Much of the interview deals with a lot of speculation on top of what we knew as facts. Meaning that we knew Carson had sex with his fans, but the age and number of girls was still a confusing topic. They even stated that they had no clue if this behaviour was continuing, or if Carson had stopped. Although what we did find out from Travis and Hugbox was that they see girls with a plural, implying that there were more than one. Both Travis and Hugbox said they did not know the girls involved, and that was about all the information we had at the time. They never gave an age to the girls or any specific information. This is likely because as many different stories were told and it seemed each of them had been given slightly altered information, they are unsure which was really true. 
So now we're into the public reception to the drama. This was the world's first impression of what Carton was doing and we're ready for public feedback. Let's begin with the first leaked series of texts with the girl Sam. This is the largest public document of Carson's DMs with these women so this is the best judgement based on what his other DMs would look like. Lastly just to preface, this is cut into some of the worst DMs. There are more from this leak that I've linked below. And the context for the conversation is what they wanted their relationship to be. Man it's been so hard not messaging you. I'm scared I want to talk to you for the wrong reasons. What if subconsciously I only want it because it turns me on or something? I want a girlfriend, but I'm scared of having a girlfriend. Should we stick to the plan? Not talk for a year? Maybe meet at PAX? All I know is every time I do the thing now, I have a really hard time not thinking about you. I guess my brain got stimulated, and now it wants more, you know? Sorry, I was in school, but yeah, I get that. Every time I go at it, I just want to give in again. You've got me fucked up, Sam. What if we read on Snap, and next time you're horny, we can have some fun again? And look, whilst the DMs are weird, 19 and 17 year old relationships are not illegal. Only Twitter can find a way to make it illegal. What is illegal is the distribution of explicit images which can be seen as weird coming from a 17 year old to a 19 year old. In this scenario it is a very small case for a large amount of misdeed and can be excused. Most of the internet at the time suspected that this was the girl and this was the drama. So what I just said about 19 and 17 year old relationships was the only conversation to be had. Although obviously this doesn't end here. As previously mentioned this girl clearly wasn't an isolated case and there is still further drama that is separate to the girls. Before we get to that, let's take a look at some more statements from some of Carson's friends, which themselves contained more information. On your screen now, I have three tweets made about the drama, each giving their series of events from where they are at with Carson, all from which having the similarity that they cut ties with Carson after the information had been provided to them. These people being Ted, Cooper, and Slimesicle, all former members of Lunch Club. To read them themselves, I have left all the links in the description and further reading on some more information. To summarize, C-Scoop wrote a short short piece saying that he had also received the information that the others received and stood with Travis and Noah Hugbox for going on drama alert. I didn't feel well enough mentally at the time to be interviewed, but thank you to Noah and Travis for going on. Slimesicle wrote a much more serious piece on how what had occurred was illegal, and he had forwarded information to what he dubbed the proper authorities. This is not drama, this is an alleged federal felony involving a child. As soon as I knew about this, I took every step to protect the unnamed victim and report the information I had to the authorities. Charlie spoke on how he had also cut ties with Carson, and included a mention to how Lunch Club, or at least their manager, had also proposed a final Lunch Club video but that was scrapped. Although the Lunch Club manager had asked about a final March drop or a goodbye video, I refused these because I no longer want to be associated with Lunch Club. Which ties back to what I said before about the Lunch Club final video that would have been made about the drama. I feel as though the actions taken by Slimesicle is a bit extreme, more on the side of including law enforcement. Although nothing came of this, and all that really happened was Charlie distanced himself from Carson, which is completely respectable. Finally we reach Ted, who wrote that he had cut ties with Carson, and had deleted the videos on his channel that included Carson out of respect for the victims. Something that caught my eye, probably because I hyper-analyze everything to do with this drama, is the line which reads, When I saw the DMs posted by some of the women that came forward. Which is important as it specifies that there are more than one, that Sam was not an isolated case. On Twitter, one of Carson's associates, Joko, from whom he had collaborated in the past, showed DMs from a group chat where Carson had been talking about the drama right after it had occurred. Although what really caught my eye here was during a slideshow of messages shown at the end of the video, and it comes in the specific message here. You probably know where this is going, but it's the wording he chose of a couple of viewers, leading to the belief that there are more than one involved. So therefore, there is a complete reason to believe that more girls were involved, at least enough to raise suspicion, especially for me. So let me give you a rundown of where we're at so far in the video. Carson engaged with an unknown number of girls who are fans of his channel. He opened up to his friends who after some time went on drama alert to reveal the information to the public. Each of them heavily implied that there are more fans involved, although none gave any evidence aside from personal anecdotes and hearsay. That is the largest question I currently have, and I will attempt to answer that. Although to approach this linearly, I will discuss some more events that reveal other information and then we can round off the video attempting to answer that question as much as I can. So that brings me to the final Lunch Club member. We've been over Ted, C-Scoop, 
Charlie, Travis, and Hugbox, now we reach Schlatt, and Schlatt handled the situation very differently. Schlatt used YouTube as his platform to express his side to the situation. On the YouTube channel The Weekly Slap, in a six minute video simply titled Carson, Schlatt went over some of the finer details of what had happened behind the scenes. He gave insight into the ways Carson would talk to his friends so vaguely that it was easy to misunderstand such basic information such as time, age, and number of girls. Schlatt detailed how he and the other friends had to learn by themselves that Carson wasn't a reliable source with all his vague and misleading information about everything that had occurred. They had no way of knowing if Carson had ever stopped and on more than one occasion he didn't. So in that light, after attempting for a bit alongside other friends to try and guide Carson through this, he inevitably also cut ties with Carson. What this video demonstrates is how Carson would treat his friends in the situation, and more graphic detail would come after that. But that never happened for a while, and Schlatt's video was the final noticeable piece of information that was public for a decent length of time. Carson would take many months off YouTube and the internet as a whole, although after a while began to seemingly post and make random appearances where it seemed as though he would be returning. It began with tweets that would be randomly deleted, the exact same with Instagram stories. Then some of Carson's associates on livestream would mention how Carson had contacted them. Most notable was Connerite's Pants and Raccoon Eggs, who both made mentions that he was getting better and Raccoon would go even further to say that he was planning a comeback. All of which would lead to a Miskiff livestream where Carson made a live appearance and made the note as he was leaving the stream that he would be returning soon. This would all accumulate on the 24th of August 2021, where Carson would post his first video since he left titled, Moving Forward. This video is a minute and 21 seconds long. In the video he says he is returning as usual, and all the further revenue after expenses will be donated to charity over the next year. The video does not discuss any of the drama, instead chooses to, in his words, turn a bad situation into a good one. The video was met with good reception, even by my standards I quite like the no bullshit direction of the video, and to fans of the channel who are just regular viewers like me, it is true that I don't deserve any apology. As I have had no negative effect come on my life because of this. Although one of Carson's associates, Connor01, would make a twit longer about this video, where he expresses concern how Carson did not apologize to his friends and the victims. The twit longer shows a lot of gratitude and Connor makes it clear that he believes Carson is a good hearted person, which I may add that I do too. But Carson did not go to distance for his friends and victims after the drama took place. And as we discussed before, he wasn't very good at communication for his friends before the drama came out to the public. So what does this tell us? This tells us that Carson did not handle the situation suitably, although with what I have presented it wasn't to a severe degree and could easily be chalked up to stress over the situation. Now it's time for a huge leap in time from that to today, where the final piece of information I have is out and we have a lot to go over. On the 23rd of September 2022, over a year since Carson came back, Noah would make a dense twit longer to his Twitter. I've already used some of the information from this document in the video, such as the lunch club coming out video they were going to upload about the drama, quote, and I had actually gotten the entire group to agree to recording a video of each of us simply saying what we were told and uploading it directly to the lunch club channel. No baseless accusations, no clout chasing, just the truth. At the last moment, many pulled out of the video. Then containing more information that further enforces that each of Carson's friends were fed different stories. Ryan, who I am now getting to, had, in Noah's words, naturally Ryan had gone behind my back, warned him, and tried to prep him. This would lead to Carson having a full discord of friends who were going to act as damage control and aided him for when the drama turned public. I'm not sure if this is where Carson's Discord messages were leaked from, as we know Joko leaked these DMs and I presume Joko wouldn't be the person who quote, not all of them suck and told me what was up. Although I'm not sure why Joko would be a part of this posse and then leak DMs, or why Carson would have to explain himself in a Discord server where people were helping him damage control. So this is not the likely culprit for this Discord of friends that Noah is referencing. Moving on, Noah elaborates more on Ryan's involvement, stating that Ryan would then call him in March 2021 saying, You can never tell anyone about this. The problem for you has always been money. How much do you need to stop talking about this? Saying Noah is all about money would be bizarre on the basis that he doesn't upload to his own channel. If Noah was going to try and milk the situation, then he sucks at business. Another piece of information about this document is about Miskiff. For anyone that was around when the Carson drama was going down, Carson made his first appearance on camera again after the drama on Miskiff's stream. Noah says that Miskiff was normalizing his comeback and indirectly taking monetary kickback from him. 
Miskiff was using Carson during this time to profit off of him, even getting Carson to demo his merch on stream. A lot of people question the validity of Noah's information, and for that I must ask a few questions. To begin we have the obvious question, if Noah says all these things about his friends with or against them, then how come no one comes out and disputes what he says? If what he's saying is lies, then this would be extremely detrimental to their careers. It would make no sense why they wouldn't just say they don't stand by him. Second is kind of like the first point but worded differently, lawsuits. Noah has mentioned in this document that he has been minorly stressed over a lawsuit because of all this. Not just Noah, according to a Keemstar tweet under C-Scoop's statement a while ago, Keem wrote that, you did not want to be involved at all, you are worried about being sued, etc. In response to C-Scoop not being on the interview, meaning that the possibility of a lawsuit was on the minds of these members. So, in that context, being concerned over a lawsuit in the same hand as lying about this type of information and about these people are two very different actions. I have no doubt based on simply my judgement of Noah's character that he exaggerated much of the information and any story will sound bad when you only mention the negative details, but overall I find it hard to believe that what he is saying is wrong. What does concern me is how secretive they are regarding the girls involved. I'm not sure whether this is because he doesn't know or is still afraid of a lawsuit. If any of you know about the drama that Miskiff was involved in, hiding that information is to a degree doing the same thing Miskiff was doing. To make myself clear, they are in no way the exact same, Miskiff was way worse, but the slight hypocrisy is still notable. Regardless of that, other information about how Miskiff used Carson and the way the manager Ryan controlled the situation to attempt to sweep everything under the rug still stands, and it's this behaviour which really acts as is the pinnacle of today's video. See whilst Noah does continue in the tweet longer about Miskiff and some of the recent drama he was in, going on about how he believes without reasonable doubt that the people around him knew what he did months in advance, what happened there, at least in this video, none of that matters. And the real climax of this video comes now. Who is the real problem here? In my opinion, this drama is more directed to someone else besides Carson. Carson was a weird friend, and like many people was often on edge and lashed out. He made some weird predatory behaviour that in hindsight and to a lot of people including Noah, wasn't pedophilic, but was an abuse of a power dynamic. In response to the drama, he handled the situation poorly and did take full and complete responsibility for his actions, and kept his friends in the dark about the situation. It does reflect poorly on his character, but not near enough to constitute any removal in my eyes, and Carson just needed to grow up a bit, which I believe he has or at least it seems that way now. Instead this video and the drama as a whole reflects more on management like Ryan P and the the shady business tactics of the industry, to how snaky friends can use your large popularity in your lowest point for their own benefit and monetizing your lows. People like Miskiff who don't treat you like friends and instead use you then throw you out. This video acts as a warning about a cutthroat and brutal industry that doesn't care about the betterment of its users but for a clean image and money those who use Carson and those who will continue to use other YouTubers. The fake people out there who keep getting away with it. This drama was complex, because much of it was not about what Carson was doing, but the direction behind what he did. Sometimes people like Miskiff will get exposed for the people they are, and his own drama he covered up for a different crime committed by another streamer, and that's what they tried to do here. This is the beginning of Ryan P's chaos. We saw him attempt to control a drama by sweeping it under the rug, pulling along Carson into performing damage control before coercing Carson's friends into being quiet using hush money. The drama might on the surface be a warning against people like Miskiff, but looking deeper we see that the real bad guy was the manager Ryan all along. He was the one using these shady business practices to save his brand, then scaring people with hush money and a fear of lawsuits to keep their mouths shut. I feel like people misunderstand my message and think that I dislike Carson. I don't. He alongside the other lunch club members and other associates are some of my biggest idols. I even have the signed poster which I framed alongside other merchandise. That's why I followed this drama so closely for all these years, because I cared about these creators and I wanted to understand what was really going on. So if anything comes from this, I want you to understand that the situation wasn't as simple as it seemed. The age debate of 19 and 17 was not the point of any of this. In fact, I almost forgot about it by this point in the video. The one other thing I want for you is to understand one last thing about Ryan P, as this will be what leads into the next video I am making. I'm sure you at least heard about what happened to Dream not long ago, and it might seem weird to think that he never really responded to that. Until you realise something, Dream has the same management team. Ryan has his hands in that pie too. I'm sure this is going to go well. Subscribe if you want to see me look into that further, and thank you for watching.
Hello everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. This one took a while to get out. I had to rewrite the script a few times to get out what I wanted to say. I even left out some drama like Katarina which I had originally meant to include but didn't find the space to make it fit in. This was all something that I've been meaning to make for a while but I wanted to make it pretty good. I know a lot of people would disagree with me on this video. Maybe because they don't like Hugbox or they still think it's about the 19 and 70 year old age gap. Regardless of that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Many hours were put into this, it would mean the world if you subscribed or even just left a comment. Anything you do is great and I'll see it. Thank you so much for checking out my video. There's more on my channel that you might find interesting. I know a lot of you guys watching are like me and have exams coming up so good luck on those. One other thing I would like to mention is the time this took to make. Not to throw excuses at you but I've been really busy with exams. I got sick for a bit so my voice sounded shit and I couldn't record and other things just got in the way and made getting this video out harder than it needed to be. I'm good now and I hope the video is worth the wait. I got some more ideas for videos in the pipeline so so I'll see you when those are made. Good night everybody. Peace.